Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our second meeting in September. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the adequate notice of compliance statement? Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the City Clerk's Office in preparation of the Council Annual Meeting Notice, dated January 3, 2019, which was properly distributed and posted per statutory requirements. Please be advised the fire exits are to my right, your left, and at the back of the room. The City has a listening system to assist the hearing impaired. If anyone needs hearing assistance, please obtain the system at the dais and return it thereafter. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Bowman. Here. Ms. Fox. Here. Ms. Gould. Here. Ms. Little. Here. Ms. McTiernan. Here. Mr. Bartan. Here. President Naidu. Here. Okay, now I'd like to call upon the members of the Summit uh, First Aid Squad to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance if they would come up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please read the notices regarding closed session hearings and comments? A closed session meeting as authorized by state statute was announced and held prior to the start of this meeting, and the known items for discussion were listed on the published closed session agenda. Please be advised that council meetings are broadcast live on Comcast Channel 36 and Verizon Channel 30 and rebroadcast on Thursdays and Saturdays on HTTV on Comcast 36 and Verizon 33. When invited to speak, please come to the lectern, clearly state your name and address, spell your last name and speak into the podium microphone so that your comments can be understood by all and properly recorded. Whenever an audience or council member reads from a prepared statement, please give or email a copy to the City Clerk's Office at rlicatis at cityofsummit.org. To help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit all to be heard, speakers are asked to limit their comments to approximately three minutes or so in length. Unless you are using an electronic device to follow the meeting agenda or need it for professional emergency contact purposes, please turn it off. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the special closed session meeting of August 30th and the regular and closed session meetings of September 3rd. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Moving on. So now into reports, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, a, few, a few announcements. Uh, I don't know if many of you have heard about global climate strike but it is an event occurring throughout the world this coming Friday. Uh, young people across the globe in more than 120 countries will, will be participating in a global strike to demand action on the climate crisis. I have been asked to join the students at Kent Place School who will be walking out of class uh, to hold an on-campus rally for about 50, 20, 30 minutes on Friday morning. Um, I applaud these young people for their activism, deeply caring about a cause and working for a solution responsibly is what makes our world a better place in Summit, New Jersey so special. And they're having this on Friday because of the UN International Climate Action Meeting next week. Um, this is National Hispanic Heritage Month. September 15th to October 15th is National Hispanic American Heritage Month. And as a city, we are thankful for the generations of Hispanic Americans who have positively influenced and enriched our community and our nation. Um, the next Mayor's Forum on Diversity meeting will be held on Monday, September 23rd at 8 a.m. in the Whitman Community Room upstairs in City Hall. Uh, members of the public are welcome and encouraged to attend. The Summit Free Market is getting going. It's going to be on September, October 12th and the 19th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Summit Transport Station at 40 New Providence Road. So bring yard sale quality items to share and take whatever you want or need. It's all free. Uh, to volunteer, please email pressoffice at cityofsummit.org. It's a great way. We, there are thousands of tons of, of items have been kept out of our waste stream because our neighbors, we share with one another. So I know I'm loading up my car on the 12th, and I hope <laughs> to find some goodies, too. Um, and then my next Meet the Mayor um, session will be held on Sunday, the 22nd of September, at the Summit Farmer's Market from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So if you have a chance, Please stop by and say hello, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions and hear about your concerns. And that's it. Thank you. 
Thank you. On to our city administrator, Michael Rogers. Michael. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, new voting machines are coming to Summit uh, in time for the November election. If you are interested in seeing the new machine prior to Election Day, please attend a demonstration at the uh, October 2nd Common Council meeting from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, or on the same day at the Chestnut Street Housing Complex uh, on 12th Chestnut Street uh, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. The Summit Public Library will also be hosting a demonstration at 75 Maple Street on October 29th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. The milling of the entire length of, of Laurel Avenue will take place on Thursday, September 19th. Paving will follow on Friday, September 20th. The street will be closed both days for all traffic except emergency vehicles uh, and reopen at the completion of each workday. Uh, and yes, the contract informed residents uh, by handwritten notice earlier today. Uh, the Division of Public Works is collecting bagged leaves on regularly scheduled garbage pickup days beginning Monday, October 7th through Friday, December 6th, or the first major snowstorm. Uh, leaves must be placed in biodegradable brown bags and placed at the curb. Residents may also bring leaves to the summit train, uh, transfer station. Uh, leaves collected in the spring and fall are composted and are made available to the public in the spring for use on, uh, on lawns and in gardens. Tuesday, October 2nd, is National Coffee with a Cop Day, an initiative that brings police officers and the community members together over coffee to discuss issues and learn more about one another. Uh, drop by Starbucks on uh, Union Place, Tuesday, October 2nd, from 9.30 a.m to 11.30 a.m. to ask questions, share concerns, or simply meet members of the Summit Police Department while enjoying complimentary coffee. Finally, on Saturday, October 5th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the City Hall parking lot, the Summit Police, Station, uh, Police Department is holding a child safety uh, seat inspection and installation event. Uh, nationally certified officers will inspect car seats uh, for damage, defects, and recalls and assist with proper installation. Please bring in the owner's manual for your vehicle and the child safety seat instruction manual. Uh, for more information, please call Officer Keith Whitek at 908-598-2114. And that's all I have for this evening. Council President, thank you. Thank you, Michael. And for, for my council president's report, I'll actually just make a plug for the Summit Arts Committee, which is having its annual gala uh, this Friday. Uh, Saturday. Saturday, sorry. <laughs> Actually, I'm attending, so I should know which day I'm attending. Um, and uh, I will say, the Summit Arts Committee, for those who are not familiar with it, if you go around town and you see all that incredible art that we have every single year that changes in and out, that's a group of folks who work very, very hard to make that possible. They, there's a committee that goes ahead, selects it, organizes, gets it in place to work with the Department of Community Services and in installation. Uh, uh, for it, and I think we as a community are much richer because of the type of art that we are able to bring. It is really incredible uh, works that you see here in the summit. So, hopefully, if, if you can attend, please do so. Uh, I th I'm, tickets, I'm sure, are on their website and it's still are available. And with that, we have two uh, ceremonial awards that the mayor is going to give out tonight. So, Madam Mayor, all to you. Thank you, Council President. Um, the first is for a, a proclamation regarding Constitution Week. So what I would like to ask Amanda Green, Regent of the Daughters of American Revolution, and anyone who's with you, if you'd like to join me at the podium. Constitution. And 
I ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to all of us through this, guard, through this guardian of our liberty, remembering that lost rights may never be regained. In witness whereof, I appear unto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Summit to be affixed this 17th day of September in the year 2019. I would just, um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Daughters of the American Revolution, Beacon Fire Chapter was established here in Summit in 1922, so we're almost 100 years of age. We started our day uh, volunteering for a naturalization ceremony in Liberty State Park this morning, and we welcomed 50 citizens to the United States, 50 new citizens from 23 countries. We volunteered in your neighborhood for over almost 100 years, and it's such an honor to receive this proclamation. Thank you, Mayor Richard. Thank you. I now have a proclamation for the Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad. Can I ask members of the squad to join me? Or even the representative? <laughs> <laughs> Shy bunch. I'll stay. I'll hang out. I know. I know. <laughs> I hope they don't make me do this when we go to calls. <laughs> no. Whereas health and safety are paramount to a sound community, and whereas since July 28, 1962, the Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad members have provided a public service to our community in support of health and safety, and whereas the Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad members have given an untold number of hours of service to Summit residents and patrons of our businesses, medical institutions, and stores. Whereas the Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad answers more than 2,000 emergency calls for help each year from Summit residents, visitors, and from surrounding communities in need of mutual aid support. And whereas Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad members have responded to emergencies of all types, both small and very large, including a major decontamination effort on September 11, 2001, and operating a temporary emergency clinic during fire, power outage, and other emergencies at Overlook Medical Center, most recently in July of this year. And whereas, in addition to emergency calls, Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad members regularly provide non-emergency coverage at many community events. And whereas the efforts of Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad members, all of whom are volunteers, should not go unrecognized. And whereas Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad relies solely on donations to provide as many services. And whereas the hardworking, dedicated members of the Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad provide those services at no cost to the patients or taxpayers, saving the city of Summit nearly $1 million per year. Now, therefore, I, Nora G. Reyes, Mayor of the City of Summit, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2019 as Summit Volunteer First Aid Squad Month in the City of Summit. And in recognition of the importance of all the good deeds and contributions by as many volunteers for 57 years. And I ask all citizens to join me in praising the volunteers and lending the squad their financial support. In witness whereof, I appear unto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Summit to be affixed this 17th day of September in the year 2019. This is a wonderful organization and whether we like to think that way or not, pretty much all of us at some point or other are going to need this group of people and these wonderful, dedicated volunteers in our lives or our friends' lives. So I would encourage you truly, send a donation because that's really where they get their, their support. Do you have well, Nora, thank you very much and thank you for that proclamation. I was just going to say uh, my colleagues and I, the 80 strong of us, really love what we do and really the only thing that constrains us is how many people we have and our financial resources. So if you or anybody you know finds you have some spare time, talk to us. It might be something that's right for you.
if you have some spare money, again, our <laughs> annual fund <laughs> starts as luck would have it uh, in the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that. We love what we do and we want to keep doing it for you. But thank you very much, Mayor. So as, I, as I said, one of the things that makes uh, Summit special is that the art that we have, but uh, more importantly, what makes uh, Summit special is the number of people who volunteer in different organizations. And we have, we just heard about two different examples of, of volunteerism. And tonight we have a new organization of, uh, that is going to come in front of us and give a presentation of, that was made up of volunteers. So I'd like to uh, ask to come up uh, the founders of this organization called Empowering Kids Organization, uh, Dr. Paolo Acosta, Dr. Patricia Fontaine, and Teresa Usme. You, you the, to pull the... I pulled it around. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Paola Acosta. I've been a resident of Summit for eight years now, and I have a rising fourth grader in Lincoln Harbor. My name is Patricia Fontan, and I've been living in Summit uh, since uh, 2008. And I have two kids that went through the schools in Summit, and uh, particularly in the neighborhood of uh, Washington School. Hi, my name is Teresa Usme. I live in Summit since 2003, and I have two children. Uh, they go to the school system, beginning in Jefferson. Uh, now my old doctor is working in Somi Public School. Okay, first of all, uh, thank you for giving us the chance to talk to you today about our new baby. This new project that we call Empowering Kids Organization, or ECHO for short. ECHO is based in Summit and was born from the belief that education is a fundamental right. Our mission is to create strategies and programs to empower underprivileged kids to thrive throughout their educational journey by connecting them and their families with opportunities and resources. All of us, and we have a four member, are very grateful that we can call more than one place home. We have the home we were born in, and we have the home we have decided to settle and raise our kids. Like most of you or all of you in this room, we also felt a deep level of commitment to give back even if little to this great community of Summit. It was through the involvement with schools that we have witnessed that Summit has a lot of goodwill and plenty of resources. But we were also able to notice that despite great efforts, some of these resources are still not reaching some of the kids who need them most. We notice as well that many of the needs underserved kids have are taken for granted, like they were given when it's not, like for example, exposure to art regularly or to local history, to name a few. Either because of language barrier, difference in culture, and other factors, we see that these two things, really resources and kids, seem sometimes being disconnected. And there is where we believe we can have a positive impact. We would like to serve as a bridge and find efficient ways to connect what is available with the underserved kids living among us. And to give you a, a one example, I'll give Teresa. We are convinced that our children need their parents and families to get involved in their education. And because we have parents that they don't know the school system, and, or they don't know the 
amazing opportunities that we had in Summit. We have a program that provides parents with the tools and knowledge necessary to give uh, the uh, tools to their children through the college search application and transition that the parents can support the children. Also in our uh, organization, we believe that it's not only the academic uh, part that it counts, that usually you can also uh, teach the kids and, and the, the families through uh, cultural events. And, uh, and we have the opportunity uh, uh, this year to uh, work with a group of students, ESL students from high, high school. And uh, we, uh, the, the students were uh, working with the, a teacher in the uh, English abilities, but during the weekends we brought them to different uh, places. We have the opportunity to visit the uh, police department, the fire department, the EMS uh, uh, house. And it was fantastic, the, the connection that the, these uh, students and their family found with, uh, with this institution. They realized that they can volunteer the, or they can uh, just have a connection with the, with the, uh, the police department, that they have a, a sale of bicycles, and <laughs> they was uh, very excited about that. We did uh, some trips to, um, one trip actually, to uh, New York, and we learned that the, some of these uh, uh, families, uh, they have never used a subway. Uh, we, uh, they don't know, they didn't know how to uh, ask for a ticket at the train station. And, uh, and I think that this is also learning and that uh, we, we can uh, be very helpful in, in this uh, uh, kind of connection of the family and through culture and they can learn about our uh, culture here in Summit and then there will be an integration and this will be we believe much easier for them to integrate in the community. Well, thank you very much for here our new organization. Thank you. We are open to questions. If thank you. you. Want. Does anyone have questions? <laughs> Beth? Yeah. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Do you have an estimate about how many children are going to be in the program or have you gotten it started? How many children are are you impacting, or do you expect to impact? Uh, we, we are a new organization, mm -hmm. and we, uh, we are going to start a small. Yep. Uh, and also because uh, if uh, it's uh, um, more impactful just to work with the small groups, uh, the yep. group that we've uh, been working with is uh, 10 kids. Okay. But uh, 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 in some way or another, uh, we can just impact different uh, groups, and uh, and you have to think that uh, in summit the uh, uh, Hispanic population, the the one that we are working right now, is 13 percent, and uh, and we we've been focusing in, in, in this uh, part of the population. Well, we're aiming to focus our programs on kids who are more or less uh, in the reduced lunch program mm -hmm. or and or in ESL programs or they're just arrived and mainly through the summit public schools making the connections. And for example, we know that many of these kids, for example, art is not a suitable option. Mm -hmm. So we want to address that, that desire that they have and connect, the fa educate the families to give them the option, for example, to consider attending classes at the art center. So it's not something, programs that we provide, but we want also serve as these connections with programs that are already available, but they are not really being used as they should. That's great. Thank you. Greg. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple questions. So thank you for what you're doing, and thank you for coming to explain it to us. Um, so the first is how you're uh, identifying the children or families that may need assistance. And the second is uh, for people here or watching at home who may want to learn more or help you how would they best go about doing that? Um, we've been working particularly with the Hispanic community, some of us for more than 10 years then, um, and 
particularly in myself, I have many hats, <laughs> and I, I work with the, with, the, with the schools as a Hispanic liaison. Uh, and then uh, uh, at this uh, point of the, our life, uh, the Hispanic community, particularly, they, they, they know where to find, to find us. And then we know more of the, of the population, but particularly we work with the, with the schools and we can just uh, uh, reach uh, and through the, for example, the Hispanic uh, Parent Association. We okay. have a connection with the, with the schools too. And, uh, and there are other organizations that uh, they, they, we, sometimes we help the why. Uh, just to connect with the with the Hispanic community and people know where to send people to us. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Thank yeah. And we have a, a Facebook page and a, um, okay. a, 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 a web web page too. Then you can uh, identify with us. And we, we have cards. That. Yeah. No, we can contact us to that. But mainly, I think it was born. Because this involvement also, we have noticed and made connections with many families. Mm -hmm. and we start learning from first-hand experience what they thought they were something that they needed. And sometimes it was just simple like making a phone call and, or giving an email address. But I guess it's mainly we're profiting from the experience of many years of, of the wonderful volunteers being through the education system, wanted to pass on this experience to somebody else and to create these connections with other institutions. Um, yeah. I'm part of the Excuse me, Teresa. They won't hear you on the TV if you don't. You don't. You want to be a TV star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the board of Chat Persomi. So in Chat Persomi, we have a lot of people from our community. Steve, did you have a question? Actually, he handled it. The, Perfect. Uh, how do we get a hold of them? Okay, yeah. great. Anyone else? Oh, Nora. I just want to thank you, and uh, I saw that great article over the summer um, with you guys and with some of the students who worked quoted as talking about how important this was to them, things that it just never occurred to them that they were possibilities. So um, you're, you're really doing great work, and, and I, I look forward to seeing all of you on Monday morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is there uh, anyone from the public that has any questions, that want to ask any questions? Is there a phone number that someone could call to reach them? Oh. Yes, uh, we have, we have information. Okay. Um, and, and so, the, uh, let me, any, anybody else, anything else? Okay. Um, again, I think joining Nora, yes, thank, and, and on behalf of all of council, thank you for coming up and telling us about the organization, uh, having the opportunity to share with a wider audience what's, uh, what is necessary. I think one of the things we in Summit here take pride in is our diversity, and, uh, but taking pride in diversity also means that working at it and, and trying to make sure that the people who uh, are there in our community know of the resources that are available. It's no use that there are tools there or yeah. and people don't know that they exist, right? So thank you for the work you're doing and if there's ways that we can help, uh, you know, come back, reach out to us and tell us uh, specifically how we can help to make sure that people know that, uh, that there are opportunities available for everyone here in this community. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, moving on, we have, uh, this is the moment in the uh, agenda for public comments. So, if there are people here in the audience who would like to make a comment about something that's not on the agenda, this is your moment to come on up, uh, state your name and your address, and uh, three minutes to speak. Anybody? Going once, going twice. Okay, sold. Moving on, ordinances for hearing. They, we have one ordinance for hearing. It's a finance ordinance. Madam Clerk, would you please read the title of 19-3198. An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled an ordinance to establish the 2019 salaries, wages, or compensations of and for the officers and employees of the City of Summit in the County of Union, the State of New Jersey. Hey, Councilman Lilly. Thank you, Council President. Um, this ordinance is to amend the salary um, ordinance, and we are doing it to amend the um, job group 18 salary range to accommodate the salary for our new um, CFO and treasurer, um, Tammy Baldwin, who are very happy to welcome to Summit, and also to add a new position in the Department of Community Programs of Program Aid and to um, also establish the salary grade for that position. So I move 
that we uh, open this ordinance for hearing. Second. Roll call, please. Uh, no, this no, is for no. hearing. Oh, now we're open. Okay, any comments? From anyone in council? Okay, this is the chance for anybody in the public that may have a comment on this uh, ordinance. Anybody have a comment? Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, I will consider this hearing closed. Okay, oh, moving on. Ordinance is final consideration. Madam Clerk, would you read 19-3198? An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled an ordinance to establish the 2019 salaries, wages, or compensations of and for the officers and employees of the City of Summit, County of Union, New Jersey. Uh, Council Lindo. As we just heard, this is the ordinance to amend the salary um, ordinance for the reasons I just stated, and I ask that we approve this ordinance. I second. Okay, roll call. Mr. Bowman. Aye. Ms. Fox. Aye. Ms. Gould. Aye. Ms. Little? Aye. Mr. McTiernan? Aye. Mr. Bartan? Aye. President Naidu? Aye. Okay, moving on for ordinances for introduction. We have one ordinance for introduction which will be heard on October 2nd, uh, the Law and Labor. Madam Clerk, would you read 6779, please? An ordinance amending and supplementing the code, Chapter 10, Animal Control, to add a new section to prohibit the retail sale of dogs and cats. Councilman. Thank you, Council President. Uh, as described, that we are open is for introduction and that uh, this would be for uh, the prohibiting of sale of dogs and cats. Uh, the, the adoption of, of and, and all that kind of stuff will be still continued. Uh, I move we introduce this ordinance. I second. Roll call, please. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Fox? Aye. Ms. Gould? Aye. Ms. Little? Aye. Mr. McTiernan? Nay. Mr. Bartan? Aye. President Naidu? Aye. Okay. Moving on to resolutions. So we have the first set of resolutions are the Department of Community Programs. Uh, Councilman Gould, the first uh, resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Resolution 6673, the accept the donation amended to $25,164.50, Senior Connections, Inc., towards the purchase of Senior Connection Bus. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions from members of council? No, but I do want, well, yes. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, yes, I want to thank the Senior Connection Inc. for um, donating the $25,164.50 to help us purchase the, the bus that we'll be talking about in the next resolution. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions from members of council? Any comments or questions from members of the public? Any further discussion? Well, I think I can say that we all join in, in thanking them for, for their kind donation. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on. Uh, Councilman Gould, uh, the second ordinance. Resolution 6668 authorizes National yeah. Cooperative Purchase of Houston Galveston Area Council Senior Bus for $70,164.50. Second. Okay, any comments or questions from members of council? Go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question. Um, we took over running the senior bus four or five years ago, and part of that was we, we, got a, we had our bus donated by Union County. Is, that, is this bus replacing the one that was donated by Union County? Mark, if you want to come on up to the podium. Yes, please. Uh, Councilman McTurnan, um, we received a van from Union County that's um, totally separate from the Senior Connections bus that we operate. That only seats, um, it's got three rows, it's not handicap accessible, and we can't transport the seniors in that van. So we got a van donated by Union County for seniors that we can't use for seniors? We, we use it for certain things, but in order to take the seniors that we deal with to ShopRite, um, different stores that have bags, they can't fit into the, into the van. Okay. So this, this van, as I remember the photograph, right, Mark has the ability to take folks who are in wheelchairs and things like that. Yeah, there's two separate. We have a bus, which we are replacing. I'm sorry, the bus. Yeah. Right. Um, this is handicap accessible. We have a lift. The existing bus that we use now does not have that. Right. Um, so this is much better. 
So, Mark, a follow-up question. So, my understanding was that in years past, the bus, and maybe Councilwoman Little can speak to this too, that was funded by the Junior League in town. So, so my question is, is that, so we've been operating the bus for the last several years. Correct. Um, but prior to that, though, the, the Junior League funds would, they, I, I believe, did they pay for this existing bus? I don't have all the answers for you, Councilman. Um, that was prior to my time, um, so I'm not familiar with exactly how things went. Um, I can find that information out for you. Right. Maybe uh, Director Cascades knows, though. So <laughs> put, put him up on the stand, as it were. <laughs> so you are correct. So the Junior League is actually um, the organization that funded the purchase of the former buses, senior okay. buses. Perfect. So, so look, I'm, I'm for this. However, this is a, a, a cautionary tale, right? So, you know, we had, a, we had a private organization that was running this, and it was thought that, oh, this is great. You know, we can take this over for minimal expense, and it's great for our seniors, and all that good stuff, which is all completely true. But, you know, now the city owns this. We own that we're going to be, you know, transporting seniors around and taking them to uh, supermarkets and things like that. When the original obligation came onto the city, there really wasn't any financial obligation around any of this stuff. And it was a very easy decision to make. Um, and you can argue, like, well, we should be doing this. That's all well and good. Uh, but um, as I said, you know, it's just we have to be very careful when we, we do things and it says, oh, this is great, We're fr it's, it's free, and, you know, you know we sh it's a nice thing to do, you know, down the road, we end up with $50,000 bills and people who have need to run it and things like that. And like I said, I'm, I'm all for it, but it's a cautionary tale about how obligations that seem like, you know, cost-free down the road, a lot of times, particularly in government, have significant costs and, you, and you're, you're dealing with them forever. And that's just my comment. Nora. I just want to say, I mean, I agree with you, Councilman McTernan. However, at the time, um, it was this group they, that the Junior League bought the buses, but the group that raised the money under the auspices of the Junior League was like the senior connections. They had a lunch every year and a fundraisers. They had lost a lot of the people that were interested in raising the money. Um, so it wasn't as if the city went to them at the time and said, oh, we can do this. They were, they were backing away. Um, they were not raising the money that they were able to raise in the past. It was becoming a problem. The Junior League stepped in and helped. But this is not really what the Junior League, as we all know, they have a mission each year and, and they don't continue to fund operational expense. So you're right. I mean, we, it, the cautionary tale does exist. Um, but there was a reason why it got here rather than just the city deciding. No, no, I, I agree with you. Right. You're absolutely right, yeah. Madam Mayor. Okay. Marjorie. Um, I was just wondering, are we going to... Um, to do something to dispose of the older bus, uh, perhaps under municipal, and get some of recoup some of that money. Do you want to take that question? Yes, we were actually in conversations with the chief, um, so we're looking to uh, give the bus to him for his um, for him to use. Chief, you want to expand on that a little bit? One last question, so, Councilor. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. Let's go and then we'll go. Um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to say, um, I, I don't know how this whole problem got started. I think it's way before my time, so I'm not sure why that, you know, I just want to clear up why that question was directed to me. But I do know through working with the community center, with the housing authority, with a lot of the seniors in town, this is an incredibly um, uh, well-used service and something that really enriches the lives of many of the seniors in town. So um, I don't know how it started, but I'm certainly happy to support it and, and feel like it's a good use of city funds to really improve and enrich the lives of many of our seniors who wouldn't otherwise be able to, to get to these places and, and to make 
do these things. So I'm in favor of this authorization. Okay. Mike, did you have? Just, just a question. I mean, in the in the documentation, we talk about there's something about um, usage justifies it. What, how many how many people take this bus every day? Is it? It, it runs five days a week, Monday right. to Friday, um, morning until afternoon, and we probably have sixteen to eighteen passengers every day. Uh, I had a meeting with um, some seniors, and they they want the city to consider uh, regular trips to Atlantic City for them. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. Let's just first get the bus. <laughs> My cautionary point. tale. I know. I, I, I had to just see that just, up for just, But to that point, it's quite possible they could win and then they pay for the bus. So let's just put that in perspective. It's quite a good idea. It could be a really good idea. That being said, in all seriousness, to Councilman Little's point, right? So, and, and, and Councilman McTiernan's point, we always have to make an evaluation of different programs and try to figure out, you know, um, yes, sometimes when a project comes in through the door, people, volunteers start it, say it's a great idea, and then the city uh, has to be responsible for it. We had a long discussion about the park line, for instance, and part of the, that, that discussion was, hey, look, uh, you know, this is a great idea, but suppose the funding ends for it at some point in time. Will the city need to pick up? That's part of the discussion. Some people at that time in the audience may have been going, well, we should just go forward with it because, you know, it's a great idea. But it is exactly that point about the cautionary tale. That's why people ask tough questions about that project, just like they would ask tough questions about this or any other project. That being said, as Councilwoman Little said, this is one of those things that there is, and, and we just heard this from the people who came and talked about empowering kids. Uh, you can sit down. <laughs> Thank you. There's, there's no reason. Uh, let me just finish my thought here. The folks that talked about the empowering kids, uh, they talked about a vulnerable population, a population that didn't know the resources were available to them, and therefore there needs to be uh, a mechanism for them to be able to get access, and that organization is stepping in and doing that. But here, what we have is there may be seniors who are in their homes, who cannot drive, who do not have access to people who will take them anywhere. And therefore, they're residents of ours. They've stayed in our community, and they will feel trapped. They'll have no place to go. What this bus does, what this program does, is give them freedom to go out and go out to the rest of the world. That is a big deal. To, to people who can do it as a regular basis, it may not seem like a big deal. But for people who are sometimes feel trapped in their homes, going out that one, two, three times a day to go to a brand new community center that we built, they need to, it's no use building that community center and having an empty building. That's a waste of money. It is not a waste of money to get people to be able to go there. That would be my only comment. Uh, any questions or comments from members of the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Community programs number three, Councilman Gould. Resolution 6692, authorized submission of the Junior League of Summit Community Grant application and authorized acceptance of the grant agreement. This resolution is to bring money for the GRACE program that we use through the community center with the fridges. They're looking into possibly bringing in ins cooking instructors, nutrition information, wellness information. Can I have a motion for that? Seconded. Okay, great. Any comments or questions from members of council? Marjorie. Uh, I just wanted to say I think this is a great program. I think it's wonderful that we now have the space in the community center to do these kind of projects and to partner with Grace and to, to bring in all different segments of the community who might benefit from this program. So I wanted to commend you on a great job with this. And I hope we get the grant. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Any comments or questions from members of uh, the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on, community programs number... For Councilman Gould. Resolution 6693, authorized submission, Summit Area Public Foundation SAPF grant application. This grant application is to expand on the cultural events that the community programs have been running, such as the Spanish Pride Night and um, Spanish Heritage Night and Pride Night. Okay. 
Okay. Can I have a motion, please? Second it. Okay. Any comments or questions from members of council? Any comments or questions from members of the public? Yes, sir. Come uh, on up. I, I have some no, 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 no. Wait, hold on. You need to come up to the mic. State your name and your address, please. I wanted to speak on the pet store. It, it, ban. No. The, well, let me explain to you. Uh, the pet store ban uh, is going to be heard on October 2nd. So there's no public hearing about the pet store ban until October 2nd. So it's the next council meeting. If you'd like to come back then and speak to it then, we will have a public hearing, just like we did tonight about the finance issue. And that's the appropriate time for a comment about that. OK? Thank you. You're quite welcome. Anybody else that has a comment or question about this resolution? OK. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. OK, moving on to law and labor. Uh, we have three, Councilman Bowman, <laughs> yeah, number one. Nervous. Thank you, Council President. Uh, law and Labor number one, resolution 6631. There's a grant, uh, place to place liquor license transfer to the Elks Club uh, Summit Lodge expansion of premises. Does everyone know that there's a, a rooftop bar going in there? <laughs> I voted for <laughs> it on the planning board. Yeah. Is it open? Well, well it's, it's coming. It's, 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 coming. it's, it's soon coming. to be here, soon to be open. And so basically, what we are doing is uh, granting the, the license to go to the third floor, and uh, that uh, would also include an $18 fee. Very similar to what we did with Summit House and uh, the restaurant that was going behind it. So I move this resolution. I happily second. Okay. Any comments or questions from members of council? Mike? I'm just going to recuse myself from this. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Being an Elks member. Okay. Okay. Um, any, I, I'm, I'm not so okay. I can vote for it uh, or against it, whatever it is. Uh, well, given that he recused himself, you need to. I recuse. probably have to as well. Okay, so you two can recuse yourselves. Okay. Um, anybody else need to recuse? We're good. Okay. Any comments or questions from members of the audience? Jay. For the record, Jay Delaney from the Linda Berry Law Firm on behalf of the Elks. Uh, it's going to be a record for me. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. That's good. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have two abstentions. Correct. Okay. Moving on to... Thank you, board. Council. You're, you're quite welcome, Jay. Uh, law and Labor number two. So, resolution number two, uh, 6630, is to declare a vacancy in the Department of Community Programs, uh, Program Aid. As we discussed in closed session, uh, this position was uh, approved in the budget, and it is one that uh, will uh, assist in the operation of the uh, community programs. I second. Okay. Any comments or questions from the yes? <laughs> I just wanted to sentence. clarify that we had included in the um, budget a position for, um, a, I believe, a recreational aid. Um, and it was determined by the director of community programs that that position would better be um, renamed as a program aid. That's why we added the new position in the finance ordinance that we heard earlier, and um, and that's why we're doing this resolution. So I just want to clear up any confusion that we did include it in the budget, but it was under a different name. And I just want to make sure that was all clear for everyone watching at home or in the room. And to that point, if I may, yes, we're absolutely. not adding any positions over the 2018 uh, headcount either. Thank you. Okay. I'll okay. make another additional comment. Yes. Uh, just to say that in the last, uh, it, in the building before it was redone, um, in the evening and on weekends sometimes, the building would be left completely unattended. People would be coming and going from programs. Uh, this person will be there uh, to, to make sure that there's a, a point of contact and to maintain the security of the facility. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments or questions from members of the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now, law and labor number three. Council Resolution 6655, uh, as discussed in uh, closed session, is to extend the intermittent sick leave with pay for our DPW employee. Uh, hopefully, he will be back prior to that, and we wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, I move this resolution. I second. Any, any comments or questions from members of council? Any comments or questions from members of the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on, capital projects. We have five different capital projects, resolutions. Councilwoman Fox, capital projects number one. 
Thank you, Council President. Uh, this is Resolution 6623. This resolution amends the professional services agreement with Mock McDonald for engineering services. And so before we had an amount uh, in the original, um, originally it was not to exceed $200,000. And we are um, asking to increase it by 35,000. So it'll be now a not to exceed amount of $235,000. This money is part of the, it, it's, this isn't actually money that's being spent. This is actually an authorization to spend attached to different capital projects. So at the beginning of the year, we set up our professional account, uh, uh, professional contracts with all the different engineering firms. And we're, we're given a not to exceed amount for the, each of those. Um, and then as projects are brought forward, we, um, as part of the capital project itself, we, um, we spend that money. So um, the reason we are asking for this additional money right to be authorized right now is that we've had a number of unexpected projects um, that uh, one of them had to do with a licensed site remediation professional at the transfer station to get, um, to get survey work done for wetlands and, um, and also other uh, site remediation work there, as well as a, a survey of the sanitary sewer system as a result of a sewer collapse on Bryant Parkway. And uh, Mott McDonald, it, it generally does all our LSRP work and our, a lot of our um, survey work, and they do it generally faster and at a more economical price than some of the other, con um, some of the other engineering firms we have contracts with. So we, some of the other contracts we are not spending as much on. Uh, so it all ends up kind of being, um, it, it ends up being a wash basically, if that makes any sense. So I move this resolution. Second. Just you so look I'm confused. clear, I yeah. am confused. Because <laughs> okay. I, think, I think anytime somebody hears that you're gonna increase from 200 to 235,000, and at the same time you say you're not going to spend any more money, because we're are going to go, uh, yeah. let me just make Sorry. sure, I will just say it in my words, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe that will be helpful, at least in my hearing, and maybe that will be helpful to anybody else who may be listening who similarly is confused. We have, we are going to try to increase the budget for Mott McDonald, which is a, one of our consultants. They do a variety of different activities on behalf of the city. Mm -hmm. Each of those activities has a different estimated cost for it or some kind of estimate for it. And we may end up getting less charge for certain activities and more for others. Is that what you're trying to say? But the ones that we're getting more, we need 35, well, like what, not what, what's the 35,000 for? Okay, well, but the things, the items that I, so no, basically. But you're, I'm sorry, Marjorie, let me just yeah. rephrase my question. You said we had originally a budget for $200,000. Have right. we used up the $200,000 budget? Yes. So basically the way, well, I mean, if Paul Maybe wants to take Maybe Paul can come up yeah. and we can go through this. Thank you, Council President. So we did. So we've exceeded now the two, 200000 Okay. We need an additional thirty-five to cover costs associated with hopefully only three projects. Um, Councilwoman Fox had mentioned the wet, wetlands delineation down at the transfer station. That's one. We have a estimate for that of around 20,000. There was some work that had to be done, um, unexpected work by them for the Bryant Park uh, sanitary sewer that Councilwoman Fox spoke about. But also there's some consulting work that needs to be done at DCP in the rear of the property that was an ex unexpected. We will need money to fund that. So we're asking for that contract to be increased. That makes sense to me. So it's not a, just so we're clear, it's not a wash. There's no there's wash. More money. There, well, it's just more money being allocated. Well, but it's, but there's money that we are not being spent, that we are not spending for other engineering firms. Um, okay. And so that's like we, th we have a, a total amount. I don't know what the right. amount is, Paul. So, Can you, so do you know? So I don't have the total amount, but uh -huh. in the beginning of the year, okay. council typically approves contracts for about four or five engineering firms for okay. different functions. What Councilwoman Fox is saying is there are a number of those that are not going to come or, or are going okay. to hit their 
limit that we have set for those contracts. Right. So three of those will probably be under what we anticipated. This one will need the thirty-five thousand dollars. That's that's and clear. the reason we're choosing this one is because they're the ones who are best equipped Understood. for this particular so they kind of work. More, okay. so that makes sense. That yes. makes sense. So Thank it's you. and and each of these is funded through the capital project is attached to a particular capital project that's already been approved in the budget as well. Understood. Okay. Right. But I but that makes sense that we have multiple different yep. consultants and contractors that we use. Some yep. of them that will be below cost. Of, of below our estimate, and so therefore there's excess, technically excess money from what we had allocated towards them that right. we are now applying towards these guys right. because they're specific projects. And that people should know, by the way, just for example, the transfer station doing the wetlands delineation, part of that work is ne that work is necessary in order for us to try to move forward with completion as required through the LSRP program. Right. So it's not as if we decided, oh, well, let's do a wetlands delineation. Right. It is something that's necessary in order to get through the state clearance process. That's right. Okay. Uh, did I did I move the resolution? I, yes, yeah, exactly. the second that we did. This was yeah, the comment. Right. right. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions from members of council? Besides my confusion. <laughs> any questions or comments from members of the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay. Moving on. Capital projects number two. Okay. So, this Councilwoman Fox. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, this is resolution six six five four. It authorizes change order number one and final for the Springfield. Avenue Improvement Project, City Hall portion. And um, the original contract was increased by $4,789, which is an increase of the total project of 3.7%. It's an increase that's attributable to a, true, to a truing up of the actual quantities of materials and also the costs of additional striping for the new parking places um, for police and um, other city vehicles along Springfield Avenue. Um, I think this is actually a great addition. Those spots have really freed up spaces at City Hall, and I understand it's making it operationally easier for the police to get out quickly, not having to navigate the parking lot. So um, I commend the engineering division for coming up with this solution. Um, and um, I move this resolution. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions from members of council? Uh, any comments or questions from members of the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on, capital projects number three, Councilwoman Fox. Thank you, Council President. This is um, resolution 6639. It authorizes change order number one for the 2019 microsurfacing program that we just recently finished. Um, this increases the project cost by $12,834 or 10.3%. And it's attributable um, to an inadvertent emission from the bid package of the microsurfacing material quantity needed for Stockton Road. Um, so Stockton Road was prepped, was ready to be part of the bid package, but so our quantities were off a little bit when we uh, put out the bid, but we've completed the work on Stockton Road and this is the additional cost that's attributable to that work. So I move this resolution. Second. Any, any comments or questions from members of council? Any comments or questions from members? Oh, we got one over here. Oh, oh sorry, Steve. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Mr. You know, I just want to, you guys are probably tired of me saying it. I love this program. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were going to say it. I mean, room, you know, I, if, if you didn't say it, Steve, we would have missed We would have been. Uh, yes. But I mean, we're, we're, we're paving roads at 50% at or less on the dollar, and, and the, the neighbors enjoy a smooth road. So I totally encourage us. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from members of council before I ask the public? Any comments or questions from members of the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Uh, capital projects number four, Councilwoman Fox. Thank you, Council President. Uh, this is resolution 6678. This resolution authorizes the submission of the revised community forestry management plan after completing minor revisions requested by the New Jersey Department of Parks and Forestry. Uh, these revisions were not substantive in nature and are detailed in the agenda packet. I move this resolution. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions from members of council? Any comments or questions from members of the public? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Last, capital projects number five, okay. Councilwoman Fox. Thank you, uh, Council President. This is... Um, I don't have a resolution number six, for six, this. Seven, seven. Uh, oh, six, six, 
Okay, 6676. Okay, this is um, a resolution. It's really a housekeeping matter. Uh, we have two vacancies on the zoning board, and um, as we discussed in closed session, we are going to uh, move everyone up a step. So our two, so we have right now uh, two alternates. Uh, well, we have three members who've moved up um, to full member alternate one and alternate two. We now have vacancies in the alternate three and alternate four position. So I move this resolution. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions from members of council? Any comments or questions from members of the public for the discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving on. Consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Council members, comments and new business. Anyone have? Any? I have two things. Okay, mm -hmm. Greg, you're up there. I'll be super quick about it. So, okay. uh, <laughs> so for. Uh, at the last, uh, this last weekend, um, I was away with the Stokes program. Um, so for more than 40 years, uh, this incredible outdoor education program uh, has uh, helped to acclimate the sixth graders to the middle school. Um, there are counselors from the high school, uh, teachers, uh, police officers, and uh, some EMS members. And it's been our ninth year uh, going to that with EMS as well. So everyone did a great job all around. And again, I'm proud to be a part of that program. Um, the other thing is, thank you for the water. Uh, we collected more than uh, 350 cases, I think, of water for our neighbors in Newark. Um, thank you to the public for donating. Uh, thanks to the fire department and police department and DCS for the use of uh, the trailers. And thank you to Mayor Radist and Amy Cairns for coordinating everything else. And that's it for me. Thank you. Beth. I had a, a similar thanks and um, and uh, a, a, for an event that happened this past weekend, the Summit Downtown Inc. put on a wonderful celebration of the Arts and Cars um, Festival, and it was very well attended by members of the public. There were bands, there was art, there were antique cars, and this year, for the first time, there was a beer garden that was well attended and seemed to be well received by members of the Summit community and surrounding communities. So I really wanted to uh, send out special thanks to Nancy Adams and Catherine Best of the Summit Downtown and all the city workers um, who and city employees who helped to put on this event. It was, it was a great day. And I'll add the PAL that was involved. Oh, PAL, yes. yes. And, the, and the art Absolutely. was organized by, by the, the Visual, Visual Arts, Arts Center. Center. Yes. Thank you for adding, adding those adding, just amendments. Piling on that. It takes but a it was village. a great event exactly. and a great day. Get everybody involved. Uh, anyone else? Okay. And, and uh, since Greg mentioned the Stokes, I want to thank folks at Stokes since they took care of my younger son uh, <laughs> on, on his trip there. With that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.